Thanks, James. I'm joined in the studio by Professor Riley, who's head of the robotics department at Hooper University. Professor Riley, can I ask you your opinion of Driver 7? Are we seeing here a new generation of robots able to take over complex and difficult jobs from human beings? Frankly, it's hard to judge because much of the detail has not been released. And we haven't seen the results of real practical road tests of Driver 7. If Driver 7 really could drive around Tokyo for even a day without some kind of crash or breakdown, that would be a major advance. Why do you think so? Simply because the traffic environment is so enormously complex. Dr. Green explained the difficulty of recognising traffic lights, but there are much more difficult tasks involved. Safe driving often depends on recognising not just the colour of a light, but the intentions of other drivers and pedestrians. Human beings are able to judge, for example, that someone walking at the roadside hasn't seen us and intends to cross the road. I'd be very surprised if Driver 7 could do that. I think it may be 20 or 25 years before we have robots with abilities as sophisticated as that. To tell the truth, I rather doubt that they've even solved the red light problem. What happens if one of those 24-hour shops is built at a crossroads, for example? Right. Of course. Successful robots have been created which can move packing cases around large warehouses controlled by a central computer. They can bring case number 1357 from point A to point B and so on. But that's still a very controlled environment. And because of that, the robot doesn't need to interpret its environment. It doesn't need to understand, for example, what happens if you drop a packing case on a human being's foot. Professor Riley, thank you for joining us. Don't mention it.